welcome to the debut edition of the KSO Sunday Show. I'm Matt Hall here with Derek Young of K-State Online. We're inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium after K-State's 49-14 win over Nichols in the 2019 season opener. This show will last about 30 minutes. We'll do three segments for you. The first one, Derek and I will just review the game for you. In segment two, we'll introduce quotes from the post-game press conference from players and coaches. And then in segment three, we'll get Derek in here to talk some big picture, maybe recruiting what happens next week. Derek, I want to start off, though, with an incredibly impressive win for K-State, of course. Just share your general thoughts. How surprised were you, if surprised at all? And what did you learn tonight about K-State? I think we're all lying if we weren't a little bit surprised, not just by the score, just the overall performance and how they went about it. Like they kept telling us how many players they wanted to play, but I was still surprised even through one quarter, just how many offensive players and different personnel groups they decided to use. They never ran the same personnel group three plays in a row the entire night, and they only ran it two, two plays in a row three times. So it just kind of tells you just how multiple and how many different player personnel groupings they used. To Derek's credit, he tried all night to keep track of every grouping, and he did, but it was it was difficult. You know, in years past, it wouldn't have been so hard, but it was tonight. Like I said, we're going to walk you through now every scoring drive for this game in case you didn't see it. Grant Flanders will have a highlights playing behind it so you can follow along. K-State, of course, gets the ball first in this game. First drive, I believe, was 12 plays, ended with a Harry Trotter touchdown. So a lot of talk about different running backs. Harry Trotter, Derek's the first back to play or to score tonight for the Wildcats. Yeah, and when you describe Trotter, I think the, the main thing that we saw tonight and how he kind of maybe was differentiating himself from the other uh, running backs that did play, he seemed to have a little bit more burst, probably was a little bit more explosive than uh, the other running backs that did play, and that kind of caught me off guard. That's, a, that's one of the surprises of the night. I uh, wasn't anticipating that. He's a... a one of the leaders in the, the locker room when it comes to squats. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me in that area why he's so explosive, but that kind of really is how he differentiated himself. Well said. I thought, too, I, I wasn't expecting the burst he had. The first drive, 12 plays, 72 yards, 615. Sounds like an old North Dakota State drive. Ends with a nine yard Harry Trotter touchdown, a Blake Lynch extra point. K State goes up 7 0. Not long, Derek, until the Wildcats get the ball back. AJ Parker interception sets up another short field. Five plays, 28 yards, a 17-yard Skylar Thompson touchdown. Two things I want to ask you about is how big was that early turnover and then your thoughts on Skylar's touchdown run. Yeah, that early turnover probably set the tone for the game more so than the opening drive. The opening drive surely was helpful in the way they were so methodical and how they went down the field. But when you can kind of, you know, turn that into a second score and it being an easier opportunity surely set them up. So a big play by A.J. Parker, and he was loving it on the sideline, of course. But And then the Skylar Thompson run, uh, probably one of the highlight reels. He kind of made a guy miss, and, and not just made a miss, he kind of embarrassed him as well. It was a great one. You always praise Skylar Thompson for having better lateral, lateral movement than maybe perhaps some people notice, and he really showed it on that run. So Harry Trotter scores in the first drive, Skylar Thompson on the second, both on the ground. K-State doesn't get to its uh, third touchdown until the early in the second quarter. They cap off a 10-play, 71-yard drive that took just over four minutes with a Jordan Brown 14-yard touchdown. So three drives, three different guys score on the ground. And at this point, Derek, is it not a perfect start for K-State in the Chris Kleiman era? It was a perfect start. You could almost call it a perfect half. We'll get into it more at that point. Despite, you know, that was a rushing touchdown for Jordan Brown, but I thought he really left his mark on this team, at least amongst the running back, because he was probably the best receiver out of the backfield. Uh, only two catches, but they were both impressive. Uh, one was probably over 20 yards on, on on, so, that wheel uh, route, yeah, 22 the yards. The wheel route, yeah. So they, they told us all camp, you know, the players, the coaches, that he was probably their best weapon out of the backfield in terms of a pass-catching option, and that showed through tonight. So you got three drives, three different rushing touchdowns, excuse me, three rushing touchdowns from three different players. The fourth one came from James Gilbert. This was interesting to me because we kind of joked in the press box, K-State finally had some adversity. They had a holding call that backed him up a little bit. They faced, I believe, a first and 19 from the 24. The next play, James Gilbert, who went over 100 yards, scores from 24 yards out. It is 28 nothing with just over six minutes left to play, and the Wildcats have really put this game away before we get to halftime even. Yeah, James Gilbert had the most snaps amongst the running backs, and I think the most carries as well. And uh, one, of the, one of the probably fair points to a little bit criticize was in the third quarter on a fourth and one where they gave the ball to Trotter right. instead of James Gilbert. And that's more so what I'm getting here is that James Gilbert probably ran through tackles and was the most physical runner throughout the night. So it was a surprise he didn't get that ball in that situation. But in the first half, he showed to be the running back that was probably getting more yards than what was blocked for in terms of you know their stable backs and how he compared to the rest of the guys. Absolutely agree. So it's 28 nothing at halftime. It looked like it was 35 nothing for a second. Dalton Schoen had a touchdown catch that would have made it 35-0 going into half that was overturned. 
the only real negative was the first drive of the second half for Nichols. They did come out. They went 10, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong one, 75 yards in just five plays, just two minutes. They had done nothing up to that point. They do score on a 26-yard Kendall Bussey touchdown run, but K-State responded well after that, D.Y. Yeah, it was, they marched on the field easy. That was probably uh, the, the brightest spot for Nichols throughout the game, but Kansas State, you know, that didn't really get them down. They, and then they went over and turned it over on downs, I think, is when they yep. got right into that fourth and one. Still got another stop. That might have been uh, the turnover by Jonathan Alexander. It might be early, but obviously that third quarter, they responded to the adversity that they showed early right after halftime as well. It's understandable how you can flip those around because K-State scored twice very quickly to start the fourth <laughs> quarter. Dalton Schoen had a 38-yard touchdown pass that stood, Derek. That was a 10-play, 97-yard drive. So the game was probably over at 28-7 anyway, but when they, they tacked that one on, Skylar Thompson's only touchdown of the night, but he was very sharp. We'll get to his stats here later. They go up 35-7, to and I'll go to the next one to hear you talk about both. Just 18 seconds later, Jonathan Alexander, junior college transfer, backing up both safety spots, forces a fumble, picks it up, returns it for a touchdown. All of a sudden, it's 42 to 7 with 14:36 left to play, and this one's absolutely over. Yeah, and I thought Jonathan Alexander actually had a played a pretty pretty good game, and we probably should have expected it. They certainly they like him, and he put them up 42 to 7 with it with that scoop and score. Correct. And uh, what I like too is he he paraded up and down the sideline afterwards with a sledgehammer. Sure so did. We might get turnover sledgehammer in there at some point. He had a little little sledge that the captain gave out. Tyler Thompson came after the game. We'll talk more about that later, but it was fascinating. They're doing some fun stuff there. I do want to give credit to the number two, number three offense, whatever you look at it. They replaced the entire offensive line. Uh, went to Nick Austin, quarterback, Tyler Burns, who's back on scholarship running back. They go 59 yards and didn't play 605. They looked as good as the ones at that point. Go up 49-7 with 641 left to play. Nichols did score late. Uh, against K-State's number twos to make it 49-14. But I want to back up Derek to that last touchdown drive. What impressed you about that group when you saw the number twos come in everywhere and they still march right down the field? Obviously, it was the way they ran the ball because uh, that certainly was how they did a lot of the damage. And, and I don't know if Nick Oss threw a ball. so I don't think so. Yeah, so it was all runs, I believe. So you got to admire the way the offensive line, as they put in the second unit, that's you know Noah Johnson, Ben Adler, Katori Leviston, Chris, Christian Duffy missing one guy. But – and then Tyler Burns in the backfield. So it was just impressive that they didn't drop at all. They continued to right. march downhill against Nichols. We're about done with segment one here. I do want to give you some stats before we wrap up this first part of the KSO Sunday show. K-State, of course, wins 49-14, to 14, 33 first downs to 11 for Nichols. K-State ran for 361 yards as a team. They threw for 212. That's 573 yards of total offense to 276 for Nichols. I don't have the exact number, but I know they were below 200 in the fourth quarter. Some individual numbers, James Gilbert, 18 carries for 115 yards and a score. Tyler Burns, 10 for 64 and a score. Harry Trotter, 10 for 52 and a score. Jordan Brown, 11 for 49 and a score. Plus, you talked about him as a receiver. And Derek, I want to hear your thoughts on Skylar Thompson for a second. 16 of 22, 212 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions. He had the touchdown run that you talked about earlier. He probably played better Oklahoma State two years ago because just because of the atmosphere and the opponent. Yep. But outside of that, this was his best game as a K-State quarterback. Yeah, that's the only game that could probably you could make an argument for. 212 yards, one yard short of a career high, which I think was in Stillwater. Yep. I, so uh, he was, you know, nothing short of spectacular. Uh, very accurate, put the ball everywhere he should. Never panicked under pressure. He got pressured a few times and just manipulated the pocket so well. So you could, couldn't ask for much more and I really like some of the the broken plays where you know he maintained his composure the throw to Shabaston Taylor was a 34 yard strike after he scrambled the pocket for six or seven seconds it was one of his most impressive plays on the night no doubt about it so that does wrap up segment one for us K-State a 49-14 winner Derek and I will be back for segment two we'll bring you quotes from the locker room after Chris Kleiman gets a win in his debut as Kansas State's head coach Back for segment two of the KSO Sunday show. Here in segment two, we'll take you inside the locker room, let you hear from the Wildcats, the coaches, the players after tonight's 49-14 win over Nichols here inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. I do want to take a second to thank our sponsors, People State Bank, Legacy Insurance, Tallgrass Tap House. We appreciate all your guys' support. Absolutely do. First, I want to take you to Chris Kleiman. I asked him after the game what he was most relieved about after this contest. He said the fact it was over. It's over. <laughs> you know, uh, the week... Uh, just, just everything. I, just how the guys attacked the preparation, how the guys attacked each day. You know, we, 
you, you can't win a game on, on Monday. You got to stack Monday on top of Tuesday and continue on. But I'm just, I'm pleased. I knew they were ready to play. But to be able to be ready to play but still detail your work and detail your plan and make sure that uh, uh, you finish on plays and stuff was really, really fun for me to see. So Chris Kleiman, of course, had a lot to be happy about after this game. He was very pleased with Skylar Thompson, was happy to heat praise on his junior starting quarterback after this contest. A great performance. He's a stud. He's a winner. Um, and uh, I was so pleased with how he commanded the offense, uh, how poised he was. You know, he'd get flushed out of the pocket and, and, and throw strikes. Uh, didn't get fr uh, frustrated when we had a couple balls I think maybe could have been caught. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, that, that kid's got that it factor. And uh, so excited for him to be able to have that kind of performance and, and leading our team. So we know, obviously, Chris Kleiman was happy with how Skylar Thompson played this evening. We asked Skylar his thoughts. He said it was his best game as a Wildcat. You feel like this is the best game you've played at K-State? Um, yeah. 100%. 100 uh, I've never, truly, I, I, I haven't felt like that on the field before here. Uh, just, uh, just the feeling of, I was just having fun. <laughs> like, I was just having fun. And I haven't, just haven't felt like that. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying I never had fun here, but, like, I just, it was, uh, it was a special. Um, and it's, uh, you know, there's just a lot of, I've sac I mean, I took so much time out of my, you know, life and sacrificed so many things to learn this offense and to watch film and prepare myself for, for this um, and to go out and, and play, you know, the way I did. I still left some things, things out there. I think that's what's awesome is I played well, but I could have played better. Um, and there's, there's things I can get better at and learn from and, and, and grow, and I think that's what's, what's the special special part about all this, but um, I, I do think that was probably one of my better games I've played here. Well, I had a chance to talk with Skylar Thompson. I had to ask him about the sledge Jonathan Alexander had after the game. What is Jonathan Alexander holding over there? Like, uh, what has he got in his hand? So we have a tradition <laughs> with, uh, with the captains now. We have uh, sledgehammers with, like, kind of our words of choice that we've put in, right. engraved in there. And uh, the one that Coach Kleiman gave me to hand out uh, was dog mentality. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, he deserved it for that strip and, and score. I mean, he did both, and I was so excited for him. It was a great play, play, play on his part, and it was, it was well deserved. Of course, for Jonathan Alexander, it was his first game as a Wildcat. The junior college transfer backed up both safety spots. Did have a scoop and score on a fumble in the fourth quarter to really put this game away. Here's what Jonathan had to say about that play. Man, I seen him. I seen him with the ball. I mean, we practice it every day taking the ball away. So it was nothing new. I was just an yeah, execution type of thing. I seen him with the ball. Took it from him, went to go score. It was just a blessing to be there. Aside from Jonathan Alexander, there's a number of defenders we could bring up to talk about in this game. One I do want to mention is Elijah Sullivan, who played well tonight after missing last season. Most of last season due to injury, he was very happy to be back on the field. It was very rewarding, especially with, you know what I'm saying, with it being my first game back and Coach Carmen's first game as a coach as well as the coaching staff, you know. So I'm just glad we got this win, but for me, it was a big game, you know, just, you know what I'm saying, sitting out our last year, and this is my first real game back too. So I feel pretty confident too, so. Let's wrap up segment two of the KSO Sunday show by going back to Chris Kleiman, who says while he was pleased with his performance, it is still just one win. I think this is another big week. You know, we, we made really good strides today. Make no bones about it. I was excited about what I saw, but let's not fall in love with ourselves. We won one football game and we've got a bunch left and, and we've got Bowling Green that, that we don't know much about, new staff and stuff, and, and we've got to have great preparation uh, to be able to have success on Saturday. We are back for the third and final segment of the KSO Sunday show. Derek Young rejoins me here inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. In this segment, we're just going to talk about what we learned big picture wise. We'll look ahead to next week in Bowling Green, talk about some recruits that were perhaps in attendance. Derek, let's. What I want to ask you first is, does this change your perception of the season? It's just one game. The thing we all do in college football is overanalyze the first week of the season. It is just one game. But do you feel different about this team after this contest? I try not to. It's hard right. not to right now. But of course, I feel different a little bit. I only projected a 27-28-14 win, so they won by three more touchdowns than I anticipated. It's hard not to overreact because this is far more perfect of a performance than I was ever anticipating. Uh, they look 
much better on offense, especially. I, I figured that the defense would take steps forward, and I think yeah. we saw that tonight. The offense, I think, is really what struck me, especially just how crisp and sharp Skylar Thompson was out of the gate. It's hard to project him having a better season opener. They didn't even look rusty. They haven't played in nine months, right. and it, you just couldn't tell. I still think we're going to learn the most about them when they go to Starkville in right. two weeks. But tonight it's hard not to get excited about it and hard not to overreact because that looks like a bull, bull team tonight. It does. You hit on this in the first segment. I, I was so interested coming into this game, and how many guys are they really going to play? He, right. Chris Kleiman has told us for months they're going to play a ton of guys. I was still skeptical. You tracked it the whole night. I don't need all the numbers right now. You'll share them on the site tomorrow or I guess today on Sunday at Case it Online. But how surprised were you at how many players, while the game was still competitive, well, I wasn't in doubt, you know, uh, it wasn't over just yet that they rolled in there tonight. Yeah, it was. I was still surprised. They played 16 skill positions, skill position players, not including Skylar right. Thompson, alone in the first quarter. Uh, 17 if you add Logan Long in the second quarter. So uh, that was a 17 skill position personnel group with Skylar Thompson tonight through the, his 65 snaps. Uh, all three running backs, well, three of the four running backs, that would be Harry Trotter. Uh, a drawing a blank here. Oh, Harry Trotter, <laughs> Jordan Brown. Well, so many played. Jordan yeah. Brown, James Gilbert. Those three all went over 20 snaps for the night. So a, a very balanced attack and, and not just snap-wise, but yards-wise as well. You said something really wise earlier in this. They were so crisp tonight. We'll look back to Skylar Thompson. Like we said, 16 of 22. I don't know if you wanted to be honest. I'm not sure he threw more than two two bad balls tonight even those weren't terrible I, I I'm stumbling because I didn't think he'd be this sharp in game one I thought there'd be more first game issues we saw it across the big 12 today against FCS opponents didn't happen tonight do you think this is who Skylar Thompson is the rest of the season not that he's going to complete 70 percent of his balls and right. be perfect but is this more who he is than who we saw last year perhaps yeah it's hard to think that your first game of the season is going to be a fluke because in theory it should be your worst game right. so I think it is kind of who who we're going to see and He's kind of been telling us that. And so as head coach Chris Kleiman, just because he feels so much comfortable. And I just think sometimes I think we don't look enough at how players fit uh, particular systems. And I think he's just a really good fit for the system and just how they manage the quarterback position as well. He was never, and we found out, you know, pretty apparently last year, he was never going to be a guy that responded well to a two quarterback system right. or responding well to being afraid to get taken out. Now he has no fears of that. And it just seems like him letting it loose is really uh, what causes him to play his best football. True freshman to play tonight on offense. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jax Deneen. You had down for what, like six or seven snaps. He had a nine yard catch today. Uh, Joshua Youngblood played quite a bit at receiver. Right. I don't know that he got a catch. Don't believe Joe Irvin played. No. Let's flip to defense for a second. How about that unit? I think it's going to be hard to single out one or two guys because of how many played on that side of the ball. But who are some guys who stood out to you on the defensive side this evening? Of course, A.J. Parker, I thought, played right. a pretty good game. He had the interception. You you had Eli just Sullivan down for a pretty impressive game. I probably expected a little bit more out of Wyatt Hubert uh, because of all the buzz. So the close to a strip sack. Yeah. And he yeah. came close on, on a number of different uh, occasions. Trey Deshaun played super well it's hard to, to find someone that didn't play well tonight uh, Jonathan Alexander played really well but I think really the best player on defense tonight was probably Jerome McPherson I thought he was fantastic too I thought Daquan Patton he didn't play a ton of snaps for a starter Daniel Green played probably almost as many as he did but he had two or three plays where he knifed in the backfield and made nice plays totally agree on Jonathan Alexander there's so many guys that we could really point out on that side of the ball that we were impressed by Let's look ahead the next week a little bit. Bowling Green, of course, was was good against Morgan State in their season opener. They got off to a big win. They're not a very good team. They have like six starters back. They have a new head coach. It shouldn't be a tremendous challenge. What are the things you're going to be looking for as we get through this week, as we listen to press conferences and watch K-State play again? What kind of improvement do you want to see from this game, or what do you want to see again? I think you probably just want to see everything again, just to make sure this wasn't a fluke, because we're really impressed with about right. what we just saw. Uh, but... You know, you did a lot of the studying on, on Kansas State's opponents, you know, through the offseason, and you're coming into this expecting Nichols to be better than Bowling Green. Right. So it needs to be as close to this, to this performance as humanly possible. I don't want to give away too much recruiting information. We love you to sign up for our site. We'll put that on our message board and that kind of stuff. But let's talk some of it. A uh, number of kids here in town tonight, including Will Swanson, who we saw in Papillion, Nebraska, two nights ago. 
Yeah, Will Swanson was pr a pretty good performance that we saw from him as well. Only one catch, but I think he only had one target, so he, he came through on the one opportunity that he did have, and he's a really good blocker. Right. I know that's cliche to say, but we saw a lot of that tonight, with how they use guys like Nick Lenners and Logan Long, so that's going to be a really good skill set that he'll already be able to provide when he steps on campus. He is the most to learn as a pass catcher, actually, but just because they don't really have a complicated scheme or really coach that up uh, at his high school right now. Uh, he was here, so were a number of other commits. Right. Defensive tackle Taylor Warner, tight end Cody Stuffelbean, Nate Mat Matlack was here as well. A couple uncommitted in-state guys that they haven't yet to offer that they're still poking around on. We have that on the site as well. So not a huge weekend in terms of recruiting, and we probably won't see a big one until conference plays heats up. But uh, – the needle still headed in the right direction and in, in that facet of the program. No doubt about it. In a general sense, I mean, what a game for those kids to see. I mean, they were all excited about their commitments. They all believed in K-State, but probably a lot of confirmation in them tonight that this is the right place for them to be. Yeah, it was a really good atmosphere, obviously. A sellout crowd. Uh, they got to see, you know, the, the entrance for the first time. By the way, I was a little disappointed. That's probably my own little disappointment. Yeah, I expected fine, something more. Yeah. It was fine, but yeah, not as a... Uh, electric as I imagine, but they saw a good atmosphere and they saw a domination, a thorough domination, and maybe, a, yeah, confirmation that this system and this coaching staff, they can't have success with this program. And tonight is probably no better evidence. A little non-football news, Grant Flanders will be catching up with Luke Kasubke and Davian Bradford, a couple of rivals, 150 basketball recruits who are in attendance tonight at this game. Probably a great atmosphere for them too. I think K-State's basketball staff is gonna like having this kind of program to help them out with this. Derek, I'm going to ask you two questions, right. uh, and then we're going to wrap this up and get out of the here and go home because it's almost 11 o'clock. It's getting late here in Manhattan, Kansas. Who were you most impressed with on offense? If to give me one guy and most impressed with on defense, your two players of the game, I'll put you on the spot. I didn't prepare you for this, but the two guys that jump out that you thought were really good tonight for K-State. Skylar Thompson was probably the easiest. But it's, it's still an easy right. answer. Yeah. It's, the, it's a correct answer, though. I don't think that. A lot of guys played well, but I don't think you can pick anyone other than Skylar Thompson on the offensive side of the ball. Defense, there's probably uh, room for argument, room for discussion there. I would still go with Jerome McPherson, as I alluded to earlier. And what I really liked is uh, he kind of plays the nickel the way that they probably – needed someone to play the nickel and we talked about it earlier we were kind of intrigued to see what it was like because he's never played the nickel right but he kind of you know is in that wheelhouse more than i thought and he was really good as a blitzer which i didn't expect as well keep an eye on the site this week it is of course case it online jimmy goheen is here with us jimmy chris nelson Derek young will have a lot of really detailed and i mean sincerely detailed analysis for you guys not just today on the site but probably throughout the early part of the week and then of course we'll have press conferences on tuesday wednesday thursday then the Wildcats are back in action this coming Saturday, 11 a.m. against Bowling Green. We'll be there for Powercat game day, 7 a.m. across from the stadium if you want to come out and see us. I want to say thanks to Jimmy, to Chris Nelson, to Grant Flanders, to Logan Mance, who won the Burrito Roll Contest tonight, our intern. Very, very proud of him. <laughs> Derek Young for his help. This has been the KSO Sunday Show on KSET Online, and we still end it by saying, Tell your friends.